perspective, from the virtues of having children, is that it is the greatest investment that you can make. As we know, the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said that he said to a person, a son, when he was referring to his father, the son was asking his, you know, was asking the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, what belongs to my parents? And Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Anta wa maluk li abik al waladu kasbu abi." You and what you've earned belong to your father, and obviously to both of your parents, but it was in the context of the father at that moment. And Rasulullah said that the child is the earning of his parent. Right? It, you know, subhanAllah, you work so hard, you toil to raise this child. And because of that, everything that that child does goes to your record. And in fact, all of the actions that the Prophet continue af- said continue after we die, being sadaqa jariya, a continuous charity, a righteous child to make dua for us, or a beneficial knowledge, all of them are found within a, ch- within a child. Because for the most part, who's going to make dua for you consistently other than your child? Who's going to give charity on your behalf consistently other than your child? Who's going to spread your beneficial knowledge consistently other than your child? So it's really, you know, it's, it's a worthy investment. And not only that, but Anawi rahimahullah, he comments on this beautiful hadith. He says that not only is this limited to the child, but to the entire offspring. Right? So, so can you imagine the aspect of it? And there's also the aspect of struggle. As Muslims, we like to struggle for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards struggle. We know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards pain. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, He, you know, he, he talks about the mother. In particular, حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ وَهْنًا عَلَى وَهْنًا حَمَلَتْهُ كُرْهًا وَوَضَعَتْهُ كُرْهًا Allah describes labor pains. Allah describes the pain at the time of delivery. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the way that the mother would scream, you know, whenever she's delivering. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is, is expressing this to show that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not unaware of your struggle Allah and the struggle of the parents as, as a whole struggle. Then there is the reward of sacrificing for your children. Right? We all make sacrifices for our children, brother and sister. And just listen to this beautiful hadith from Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha in Sahih Muslim, where Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha says that a poor woman came to me with her two daughters, and I gave her three dates. And she gave each of them a date, and she was about to eat the third one. And then when one of her daughters asked for it, she took that date and she divided it into two and she gave it to her two daughters. So she went hungry while her daughters ate. Now how many times did we, did we sacrifice for our children? You know, there was something that we wanted to do, there was something that we wanted to eat, but as soon as our children put their eyes on it, that was it. Right? It belonged to them. And so Aisha radiallahu anha, she was amazed by this. So she, she told Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam about what she saw. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, حَقَّتْ لَهَا الْجَنَّةِ بِهَذِهِ التَّمْرَةِ Jannah became her right. Subhanallah, just as the food was the right of the child when, they looked, when, when the child looked at the food, Jannah became her right because of that date, because of that one date. So even the sacrifices that you make for your children on a daily basis, especially when they're, when they're at a younger age, you know, the happiness that you would forego sometimes. You know, the, the time that you would rather spend in something else, but the time you sacrifice for them. Don't think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unaware from that. And that's whether the child is righteous or not. For example, with the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam said to raise your children on salah at seven. Make sure your kids are praying at seven. Not just one or two prayers a day. Make sure that they're praying the five daily prayers at seven. Fajr counts too, even on the weekends. At seven years old, your children should be praying. And Rasulullah said, what? And at the age of 10, then you need to discipline them physically. The Prophet was not, giving, was not telling the Sahaba, you know, if your kids aren't praying at 10 years old, go smack them around. Actually, the perspective of this hadith is that a lot of people react with the hand in the first place, right? They start slapping right away when their kids aren't praying. You know, that's the way that they start, they start disciplining physically from the first place. And what the Messenger is teaching us is that if for three years, Three entire years, every single day, you are ensuring that your children are praying just like you. Do you really think that would be necessary at the age of 10? No. Okay? So you start early. And how early do you start? When do you start trying to ensure righteous children? When? 
before a pregnancy. <laughs> when? Which du'a? Before marriage too. Before that too. <laughs> you ensure, you try to ensure the righteousness of your children even before marriage. The Prophet ﷺ taught us, or Allah Azawajal teaches us, Ibrahim alayhi salam's du'a. And Rasulullah used to make this du'a and he taught us to make this du'a. Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa dhurriyatina qurrata a'yun wa ja'alna lil muttaqina imama. O oh Allah, grant us from our spouses and our offspring the coolness of our eyes and make us imams for the muttaqin, make us leaders of the muttaqin. So there is that. And you know what else? The way that you treat your parents. That's also a way of ensuring the righteousness of your kids because what goes around comes around. SubhanAllah, the, you know, I see some of the things that, that my daughter does to me. I'm like, you know, I remember making that same joke or pulling that same thing with my parents. And she's just three and she's already doing this. All right? Some of the things that, that um, my Sunday school kids, before I became imam, my Sunday school students used to do to me. I would say, SubhanAllah, I remember playing that same prank when I was in Sunday school. You know, it, it comes back around. SubhanAllah, it does come back around. So the way that you treat your parents the way that you treat your parents. Now obviously there are exceptions to that. There are exceptions to that. But generally speaking, you will see some of it if you look close enough in the way that you treated your parents, that uh, your although, children will treat you. you. Know, it, it's illogical and it doesn't make sense. Un unfortunately, some people only react when it comes back to hit them in the face. You know, whenever they see the consequences of their actions. Some people are not proactive, some people are reactive. They wait until their children grow up and their children are telling them to, you know, to, you know saying bad words to them and telling them to go away and, and shutting the door on them and not giving them the time of day and then questioning Islam and so on and so forth. That's when some parents are like, wow, what have I done with my life? And we should not wait for that time. To remember that and, the you know, of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he encouraged us to have children. So having children is a sunnah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, you know, have as many children as you can, for I will be proud of your number on the Day of Judgment. Rasulullah will boast about the number of Muslims on the Day of Judgment. Now obviously, this Ummah is the largest Ummah of believers on the Day of Judgment. Out of all of the nations of the Prophets, this Ummah will be the largest of them all. And Rasulullah encouraged us, and the Prophet talked about being proud of us on the Day of Judgment, you know, the number that we have. Um, Obviously, from the individual perspective.